students. I'm glad you've chosen to attend class today. <laughs> this is Menopause University, <laughs> and I'm your professor, Menopause Taylor. We are still chipping away at our huge unit on breast cancer that began with video number 356. <laughs> We've arrived at the part of the unit in which I give you all your management options for decreasing your risk and helping you prevent breast cancer. This is video number 403. <laughs> Can you believe it's the 48th video in the unit? This means that there are 47 breast cancer videos and 402 menopause videos that you need before you'll be ready to really benefit from what I tell you here today. Somehow people have come to believe <laughs> that they can understand something before they have the building blocks of information that form the basis of what they're trying to understand. It just doesn't work that way. I know you live in a world of sound bites and quick fixes, but managing your menopause will never work according to sound bites and quick fixes. It's going to encompass the entire rest of your life, for heaven's sake. Why in the world would you expect it to be reduced to a tidbit or two? So just accept the fact that this education is an investment in your future and be mature about getting this education the right way. And the right way to get any education is to start with the basics and build from there. So that's why I'm always pleading with you <laughs> to start with video number one and watch all my videos in order. Our topic for today is on the vitamin, mineral, and supplement options for preventing breast cancer. Everybody focuses a lot on vitamins, minerals, and supplements these days, but the key to using them successfully for anything is to know precisely what each one can do and cannot do for you in terms of accomplishing your goals. And before you do that, you have to understand the very industry that produces them. So I present all your vitamin, mineral, and supplement options for each and every aspect of your menopause management, along with educating you on the vitamin, mineral, and supplement industry. Chapter 30 is the breast cancer chapter in my book in both the first and the second edition. And as always, it's good to use both the book and these videos to get the best possible menopause education. So do you hear many women talk about vitamins, minerals, and supplements with regard to breast cancer? I find that despite all the attention directed toward breast cancer, women know very little about it. There's lots of fear and very few facts. I hear women attributing powers to vitamins, minerals, and supplements that they don't have. And I see women failing to use them for the powers that they do have. So let's make sure you know precisely which vitamins, minerals, and supplements can make a difference in decreasing your risk of breast cancer and how much of a difference they can or cannot make. Now you know that my favorite thing to do in these tutorials is to give you a quiz question, right? <laughs> so I'm going to give you one now. How would you answer this question? Which of these vitamins, minerals, and supplements helps to prevent breast cancer? A. Vitamin B12 and zinc. B. Magnesium and lecithin. C, omega-3 fatty acids and coenzyme Q10. D, vitamin E and omega-6 fatty acids. E, biotin and magnesium. F, vitamin K and L-carnitine. G, none of the above. H, all of the above. When you saw that quiz question, did you immediately know the answer without even having to see the answer options? Or did you draw a complete blank? 
Did you start reflecting on which vitamins, minerals, and supplements prevent other diseases before you were able to focus solely on breast cancer? Did you feel completely overwhelmed with the numerous vitamins, minerals, and supplements for this or that, feeling like you'll never get them straight with regard to which ones do this or that? Did you find yourself realizing that you don't even know which of these are vitamins, which are minerals, and which are supplements? If you had any of these thoughts or feelings, anything other than complete certainty, you are not alone. In fact, you're normal. Well, I'm not going to give you the answer right away. I want to mention a few things first. Most people know very little about vitamins, minerals, and supplements other than a few sound bites of information. In fact, most people's knowledge about vitamins, minerals, and supplements is a result of advertising and marketing rather than education. I always say there's a very fine line between ad and ed. Ad is for advertising. Ed is for educating. And these days, there's a whole lot of advertising and very little educating. That's why most people have the false expectation that they can learn everything they need to know about menopause in a soundbite or two. That's what the world of advertising wants you to believe. It's exactly what makes you feel certain about a particular product or brand. It's exactly why you always ask, what's the best brand for this? And what's the best that... It's why everyone thinks there's the best of everything. It's what prevents you from posing questions. It's what makes you buy the beliefs, faults, promises, and products of the advertising world. Education is very different. Education makes you cock your head, consider alternatives, use common sense, build one concept upon another, and ask questions. It enables you to connect the dots in a logical way. So my goal with this education is to ensure that you use knowledge, not propaganda, to make management decisions for your menopause. The reason you probably had no idea about how to answer the quiz question is that the advertising world promotes vitamins, minerals, and supplements as a panacea for everything without specifying any of their limitations. The entire industry is unregulated, which means there is no way for you to know what you're really getting in any product. Anyone can manufacture any vitamin, mineral, or supplement from any raw material. There is no oversight whatsoever. So you could go out right now, take some empty capsules, fill them with dust, dirt, and sugar and label them as any vitamin, mineral, or supplement you please. And then you could go make any claim you conjure up about how magical they are in preventing this or that. And because you hear so many different claims about all the superpowers of vitamins, minerals, and supplements, you expect them to perform magic. Well, no vitamin, mineral, or supplement can perform magic, especially when the entire industry is unregulated. The next big misconception about vitamins, minerals, and supplements is that they constitute the safe or the natural way of maintaining your health. Unlike the pharmaceutical industry, the vitamin, mineral, and supplement industry is not required to prove safety of any product before putting it out on the market. There's no research. There's no requirement to warn you of possible side effects. There is no accompanying literature divulging all the possible risks. Nope. In the vitamin, mineral, and supplement industry, 
Any manufacturer can market any product without having to divulge anything at all about it. So if that's your definition of safe or natural, you're mistaken. These are characteristics of products that are merely unregulated. And just because there are no warnings does not mean that they are safe or natural. Another very interesting phenomenon of our excessive focus on vitamins, minerals, and supplements is the way people talk about meeting the daily requirements for them. It seems that people have completely forgotten that we're supposed to be getting our vitamins, minerals, and supplements from our food rather than taking them out of a bottle. So I think we need to replace the word take with the word get. Get them from your food. Don't take them out of a bottle. The bottle will never give you the same benefits that the food gives you. If you eat the 100% plant-based diet I discussed in video number 400, you don't have to worry about getting all your necessary vitamins, minerals, or supplements with one exception, which is vitamin B12, because it is only found in animal products. So learn about which vitamins, minerals, and supplements help prevent breast cancer or anything else, but then get them from your food instead of taking them out of a bottle. So are you ready to see the quiz answer? <laughs> you probably thought I'd forgotten all about it. No, my dears, <laughs> forgetfulness is definitely not one of my shortcomings. <laughs> I have plenty of others, but forgetfulness <laughs> is not one of them. <laughs> So here's the quiz question with the answer in bold. Of all the vitamins, minerals, and supplements, the only two that can help prevent breast cancer are omega-3 fatty acids and coenzyme Q10. There are 13 essential vitamins, 11 necessary minerals, and 11 important supplements. That's 35 items in this category. And only two of them have any direct role in helping to prevent breast cancer. And notice that I said they can help prevent breast cancer. I did not say they could prevent it. I did not say they could treat it. I did not say they could cure it. And I did not say they could do anything all by themselves. This is where most people get into trouble with vitamins, minerals, and supplements in general. They assume that they can do much more than they can actually do. And the vitamins, minerals, and supplements in a bottle can do very little indeed. So do not use any vitamin, mineral, or supplement with any expectation of doing anything more than keeping your already healthy body healthy. And don't rely solely on vitamins, minerals, and supplements to do even that. All right, now let's talk about omega-3 fatty acids and coenzyme Q10, specifically with regard to their role in helping to prevent breast cancer. Most people get far too little omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acid is really difficult to get from any bottled supplement. It can even be difficult to get it from food. Omega-3 fatty acids are polyunsaturated fats. Polyunsaturated fatty acids. Some people prefer to use the acronym P-U-F-A or PUFAs. <laughs> there are three reasons it's difficult to get enough omega-3 fatty acids. First, most people don't eat enough of the foods that contain them. Second, omega-3 fatty acids compete with omega-6 fatty acids in any foods that contain both of them. And third, the food industry processes omega-3 fatty acids out of the foods 
that contain them. This makes people turn to omega-3 supplements in a bottle. The foods that contain omega-3 fatty acids are seeds like flax seeds and chia seeds, nuts, especially walnuts, green veggies, algae, and fatty fish like salmon and mackerel. Notice that most of these are part of either a 100% plant-based diet or the Mediterranean diet, which is really a 100% plant-based diet that includes fatty fish. But fatty fish introduces the second reason it's difficult to get enough omega-3 fatty acids. It contains both omega-3 and omega-6. And in any competition between the two, the omega-6s win. Omega-6 is much stronger than omega-3. The ideal ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 is 2.3 to 1. But most people get a ratio on the order of 1 to 6. And the third reason it's difficult to get enough omega-3 fatty acids is that the food industry destroys them during processing. But the supplement industry does the same thing when they put them in a bottle. In fact, when they put omega-3 fatty acids into a bottle, not only are they already destroyed, they also degrade very quickly. You're usually left with nothing. So before you go and run out to buy omega-3 supplements in a bottle to help prevent breast cancer, consider just eating a 100% plant-based diet instead. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money and your hopes. And you might recall that omega-3 was a critical means of helping to prevent Alzheimer's too. So why not decrease your risk for both breast cancer and Alzheimer's at the same time? The only other supplement that helps prevent breast cancer is coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. Now, here we have a potential dichotomy. Your own body makes its own coenzyme Q10. And if you're getting all your vitamins, minerals, and supplements from your food like you're supposed to, that process is unimpaired. But if you're eating the typical processed, fast, convenient, instant, and packaged foods of our time, the process is probably impaired. And the dichotomy arises if you need to eat more of the foods that contain CoQ10. And that's because da, 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 the only foods that contain CoQ10 are animal foods. Just like you, other animals produce their own CoQ10. And if you don't have enough CoQ10 in your own body, you have to eat the CoQ10 in their bodies. Of course, relying on other animals for your CoQ10 is inconsistent with a 100% plant-based diet. So you see, we are back to the principle of trade-offs that I talk about all the time. Organ meats like liver are the best sources of CoQ10. Alternatives are sardines and mackerel. And again, what you take from a bottled supplement is never as good as what you get from food. Do you see how both of these supplements create somewhat of a vicious cycle of inadequacy. So there you have it. Of all the vitamin, mineral, and supplement options, there are really only two that have any real benefit in helping to prevent breast cancer. But if you had to choose between using these supplements versus adopting the lifestyle measures I presented in the last video, which do you think gives you more bang for your buck, as they say? Being a thin, active non-smoker or getting omega-3s and CoQ10? 
it's the lifestyle factors by far, by miles and miles. So do not get the idea that you can be an obese, inactive smoker and take the lazy route by popping these supplements or getting them in food and still gain the same benefit that you can get from being a thin, active non-smoker. Omega-3s and CoQ10 offer very little benefit. One of the most critical lessons of this education is to understand the different degree or weight of benefit with each and every option. That's why I present them individually and then I compare them all for you. I guess you could say you get very little benefit from supplements in a bottle. And in the case of supplements for preventing breast cancer, the benefit is minuscule. Women make the huge mistake of assuming that all the options are equal in terms of their benefit. This is definitely not the case. You have to know which benefits carry the most weight for each and every disease or symptom. These supplements are lightweights. Okay, that does it for today. <laughs> to summarize, there are only two supplements with any benefit in helping to decrease your risk of breast cancer. They are omega-3 fatty acids and coenzyme Q10, but their impact is extremely small and nowhere near as great as the lifestyle options for preventing breast cancer. Don't you just love the way each video brings you closer and closer to meeting your goals for your menopause management and takes you farther and farther away from getting breast cancer? Next week, I'll present the herbal options for preventing breast cancer. Please visit menopausetailor.me to schedule a life-saving consultation. <laughs> Please subscribe here to my channel and to my newsletter and find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Stories. And please keep coming back to Menopause University. I love having you here. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>